Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to the beginning C Sharp with Unity screencast series. In this episode, you'll be learning about properties and how using them can save you time. In the last episode, you were introduced to the idea of encapsulation, that is, hiding access to instance variables and allowing access through methods. As mentioned, this makes your code adaptable to change and also prevents other code from changing your object's internal state. There is a problem with this approach. Imagine you had an object with 10 instance variables. Then you'd have to write 20 individual methods, one method to get a variable and another method to set it. Each method would be almost identical to the other. Thankfully, c -sharp provides another way for you to do this, which will save you time, and that's through the use of properties. A property automatically provides a way for you to read and write to a private field without forcing you to write those individual methods. When you create properties, they look exactly like instance variables, but are actually methods instead. For instance, here we are setting in the instance variable score to 100. Now, look as we set the number of lives property to 3. Setting a property syntax is identical to set setting a public instance variable, but behind the scenes, the number of lives property is actually a method. You can later change that method, for instance, if you wanted to add validation to it. Here's how you define a property. First, you give it an access modifier. You give it a type and then a name, exactly as you've done before. Next, you provide a pair of braces. It is within these braces that determine how your property can be used. If you want outside code to be able to access the value, you would write a get followed by a semicolon. Next, if you wanted the outside code to be able to set a, va a value, you write set followed by a semicolon as well. And that's it. You've defined your properties. You don't have to provide a get or a set. For instance, if you wanted to have just a read-only property, you could omit the set. If you want the property to be write-only, you could omit the get. The great thing about properties is that you can change their implementation. For instance, if you wanted to return a score adjusted by a modifier, you simply provide the code for get. In this case, after the get keyword, you provide a pair of braces that returns a value. Unfortunately, setting a value brings up a bunch of issues. When you override a setter property, you need to create a new backing variable. Otherwise, you create a recursion error. By referencing the property name in the custom setter, the property will keep trying to set itself a value. To avoid this, you create another variable to store a value. This is called a backing variable. This does prevent the recursion error at the expense of simplicity. The second issue is that when overriding a set value, how do you gain access to the value being set? Thankfully, c -sharp provides a variable that contains the name for you, and it's aptly named value, like so. Finally, properties have one last disadvantage. By default, they do not appear in the inspector. So if you create a public property, you can't set that property inside of the Unity inspector. To actually get this to happen, you have to write your own code, which is beyond the scope of this tutorial. Okay, to demonstrate properties, I'm going to create a new script, and this is a new c -sharp script, and we're going to call this properties, like so. So you can see here we have our class properties, and this is where we're going to display things out to the console, but I'm going to create another object. And this is, we'll, we'll just call this object bad guy. Like all bad guys, this will contain a simple point value. And we'll just call it point value like this. And we're making this instance variable public. This means any object can write to it. Now let's create on disable. Here we're assigning his point value of 100 and we'll just print this out to the console.
Back in Unity, I'm going to select the cube here. We're going to remove the monster that's currently attached to it. And we're going to add the property script to it. Now when I run this and we select the console and we disable the cube, we can see that the bad guy is worth 100 points because we're assigning a value to the instance variable. What we want to do is now is use methods instead, and that way we can protect the internal state of the object. Back here in Visual Studio, I'm going to convert this into a property. And as you can see here, it's very similar to how the instance variable is set up. Instead of having a semicolon, I'm going to put an opening brace here, and now I can just put get in set. And this has created a property. And you'll notice here that this compiles fine. Using the property, now instead of the instance variable, we can select the cube and deselect it, and you can see we get the same result. Except now we've added some flexibility into our code. Let's take, for instance, we want to assign a bonus to the bad guy. So I'm going to create another field, and I'm just going to call this bonus like so. And when we get the point value, I want to get the point value plus the bonus added to that. Again, if we were just working with instance variables like here, we wouldn't have this flexibility like we do when we have a property. So for the get, I'm going to put an open brace. And you can see we have a closed brace like so. And I will just simply return the point value plus the bonus. Now you'll notice that we're getting an error for the setter. And this is because once you override one of the gets or sets, you have to override both of them. In this case, I can solve the error by making this just a read-only property. And by deleting the set, that solves that error. Or I can just fill out this setter. Now remember, when working with the setter, we can't use this point value name anymore. We have to create another backing variable. So we're going to create one called int, and we're going to call this point value. I'm going to lowercase this. Oftentimes, you'll see people set up private variables with an underscore preceding it. And this just indicates that this is a private variable. But for now, we'll just do this lowercase. And now we're going to set this value. So we're going to set point value equals value, like so. Now we got to fix this too. So let's just refer to the same backing variable. Now everything is good. Now, if we wanted to do some validation, for instance, if we wanted to make sure that the point value is greater than zero, we could say we could write like so. If value is greater than zero, then assign it the value. Otherwise, we'll just set the value, we'll just set the value to be zero. This prevents the bad guy from having negative points. And you'll notice here that this runs the same exact way. Now let's just do one other thing as well. Let's just set debug.log and we'll put did set. Back at Unity, I'm going to stop and restart the game. Now we're going to disable the cube. And you can see that this did set log message did fire over here. So as this was setting the value, some additional code ran. This is known as having side effects. So setting the value to a property is creating a side effect in your code versus just having that value be set. And you can see here, the bad guy is worth 100 points. It's really interesting. It's important to note that this code here hasn't changed from when we initially wrote it. This is a property now when initially it was an instance variable. So properties gives you that flexibility while also allowing you to change how those getters and setters actually work. That's it for this video tutorial. But as always, we like to leave you off with a challenge. In your challenge, I want you to create a property person. This struct should have a string property called first name and another called last name. Both should be able to get and set. Finally, create a read-only property called full name, which is a string, and have it returned the combined first name and last name. Use your own name as a test case, and like always, do everything in on disable.
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay, in your challenge, I asked you to create a script called Property Person, which has a first name and a last name. It also is to include a full name property that simply combines the first name and last name, and it being a read-only property. So let's do that right now. Here, I'm gonna create a new script, and we'll just simply call this Property Person. Now the class is called property person, so we have to call our struct something else. So let's just call this p person, like so. Now what we're gonna do is give it the first name. We're gonna have a public. This is gonna be a string, and we're gonna call this first name like so. And we're gonna set this to be a get and a set. Now we're gonna do a last name. And we'll also do this as a get and set. And finally, we're going to do a full name. And this is meant to be only a getter. So we're just going to implement get here, and we're going to return first name plus the last name. Now with that in place, we're going to come down to our property person here, and we're going to create on disable. Next, we're going to create a, a P person, and we'll just simply call this person. And now I'm going to set the first name, and we'll say Brian, and we'll also set the last name, and that's Mowgli. And with that, we're going to print out the full name. Now remember, we only implemented get, so let's see what happens if I try to set the full name. And you'll see right away we get a compile error. So we're gonna delete this here. Okay, back in Unity, I'm going to remove this property script then we're going to add property person to the cube. Now we're going to run the game. With the console open, I'll simply disable the cube and you can see here the full name is Brian Moakley.